Hi, my name's Anthony Turner. Uh, I'm a director of the Small Business Institute and today my guest is Julie Hine, who is a lady who's been working in the uh, area of personal styling and personal uh, branding. And Julie, welcome to uh, the interviews and thank you for giving us some of your time. Oh, very welcome. Julie, one of the key things that I'm sort of aware of from some of the conversations that we've had is that, you know, we talk about image, we talk about styling and all this sort of thing, which, which has a tendency or could for some people be seen to be fairly superficial. It's actually really not just about the appearance, is it? It's about no. feeling good, it's about a whole range of other things. Would you like to explain to the, the viewers and listeners exactly you know, what all this is about? Well, when we talk about creating a great image, Anthony, yes. it is all about, it's, it's everything about you. It's not just about how you dress, it is about how confident you feel, where your self-esteem levels are, and how you come across to other people. And so I work with, with many individuals in so many different ways, mm -hmm. and we start by having a conversation as to where they are now, now and where they want to be moving forward. And sometimes that can involve a whole mental shift in terms of owning their own image, in terms of what they wear, how they speak, how they present, uh, how they groom themselves, and also everything else that flows through from that. So how they behave, their body language, um, also how their office looks. So it, it goes way beyond the actual person themselves. So we do start at the beginning. We start obviously with um, visual appearance, that's really important. Yeah. And then we move forward from there, perhaps in terms of how they present, their verbal, how they project to other people, what's the impact they're having on people when they meet them for the first time. So there's quite a lot that we actually go sure. through. Sure, yeah, it's, mm. it's, it sounds a lot more complicated than what it, <laughs> <laughs> it I, I, seems. To well, <laughs> to me, it's not. To them, if I presented yeah. it like that to them, they'd be probably, oh goodness. But <laughs> we do it in a very gradual way, which keeps them very comfortable with the progress that we're actually sure. making. Sure, So what, what actually constitutes constitutes what you would call, say, a good image versus a, a bad image? Okay, well, image is comprised of so many different things. Sure. Um, firstly, we look at what's going on with the person themselves, so what's happening on the inside. And, and a lot of that is from how they've been brought up, so yes. it's their cultural beliefs, their values, what motivates them, and how they think about things generally. So that's what's going on in the inside. And sometimes that needs to be tweaked a little bit mm -hmm. in terms of attitude too, um, because everything flows through, obviously, from the inside out. Sure. So then we look at assumed image, and assumed is all about one's reputation. So it's knowing what other people think about you. Okay. And sometimes people don't stop to think what other people think about them. And if it's not in line with what they would like other people to think about them, then there's a mismatch, so we need to work okay. on that as well. Yep. Yep. Then there's the visual component, which is what they wear. And yes. that's also, you know, is it appropriate? Is it enhancing to them as an individual? Is the style they're wearing, you know, really attractive? Are they wearing the right colors? What's the coordination looking like? Um, body language as well. Are they smiling? Are they having eye contact with people? So that's that part. Then we go into uh, what we call proven image, which is, are they doing what they said they would do over a period of time? So are they following through and being true to or authentic to who they say they are? So, okay, yes. you know, there's all these different things that are going on, which constitutes a great image. Okay. And it's all about then having people perceive them the way they want to be perceived so that they can actually move forward and be successful. And and you touched on something very interesting there, which is the authenticity of mm. it. Um, mm. Because I think most of us um, have seen people or come across people who put on a good facade, mm -hmm. um, but the what's underneath it is actually oh, totally. telling a totally different story. Totally. Look, anyone can walk <coughs> into a room and look immaculate, but it's what follows through that yes. really has the greatest impact. So if someone walks into the room and catches everyone's eye, but then as soon as they open their mouth, what comes out of their mouth is not consistent with what they're actually seeing, 
then that gives people reason to be very suspicious of what's going on. Sure. And it will take that person a lot longer then to actually gain the trust and rapport that he needs to be able to move forward. Okay. Does that make sense? Abs absolutely. I mean, one of the things we, do, we talk about in training is when we talk about um, um, you know, so, uh, uh, social comfort is our description mm. of it, mm. um, is that you know, people buy at different levels. So whether it's at Harrods or whether it's Best and Less or anything in between, it doesn't really matter. Um, one of the examples we use is, you know, if you saw a Louis Vuitton piece of luggage in Best and Less, mm. you'd probably think it was a fake. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Totally. Um, because it's out of character with what you would expect. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, image is a very interesting thing because I would imagine there are different sort of expected or accepted images within different stratas of mm -hmm. vocations in terms totally. of, um, you know, like the trader, if, if I, I wear a suit and a shirt and stuff like that because I'm in a business environment. Mm -hmm. But if I turned up on a, a building site like this, you know, it's going to be totally out of place. Look, it, it, you're correct um, in saying that. Every industry has a different accepted dress code. Yes. And it is important that people try and match that in whatever way because when people meet you for the first time, Aside from the first impression, there's also four elements that they look for. One mm -hmm. is your credibility, one is your uh, likability, so how, how like them are you? The other is your personal attractiveness, yes. and the other one is your level of confidence. So they really do look at if all of those things are happening together. So if they're not feeling comfortable with you in terms of you're dressing totally differently to them, your language is totally different to them, mm -hmm. you're not connecting with them on the same page, then yes, it's going to be very, very difficult. So I say for a lot of people that I work with that are going into like career transition, it's all about identifying the nature of the industry that they're going into, what are the people like, what are their lifestyles like, what mm -hmm. do they normally wear, yes. what's an acceptable dress code for them yes. to go in and actually work with those people. Because mm -hmm. you're quite right, you know, you, and it's the same in, I have worked with a lot of real estate agents and they often get confused because there's a, an accepted standard of dress for a real estate agent but then if you're working in country regional areas, that has to be modified quite significantly. Okay. Um, I worked with a client recently who was a more mature gentleman, but and he worked in the inner suburbs in a very affluent area, but he felt that he was missing out on a certain market segment because he was dressing too formally. So okay. we actually had to work on giving him a more casual look to attract that market that he was trying to get into, okay. which has worked really well. Which really comes down to that whole first impression thing, doesn't it? You know, whereby, you know, literally you've got how many, it's a very short space of time, isn't it, where you've actually got... Seconds. Given, it's seconds, seconds. yeah. Seconds. And, and we actually automatically and yes. unconsciously make judgments about people and then we, we look do. for ways of how we can make ourselves right and, and them wrong in terms of the judgment. <laughs> no, we do. And, we, and it's just our social conditioning that we do yes. that, how we've been brought up. So when you, you do it all the time, when you're even just walking down the street, you'll look at someone and you'll immediately be summing up in your brain, you know, how old they are, what occupation they have, what level of um, intelligence they have, what school they went to. All of these things are going on in your head without you even realising it yeah. so that you form an opinion of what that person is like. Okay. Yeah. In terms of creating that uh, first impressions and uh, obviously without going overboard with it, is there such a thing as sort of being overdressed? versus underdressed? Yeah, well, there is. Um, we talked before about going into different industry segments. Yeah, yeah. Um, certainly, if you went into somewhere and you were significantly overdressed, people mm -hmm. would be a little bit wary of mm -hmm. you. Um, on the reverse side of that, if you go in significantly underdressed, they would think that you're really not that serious about playing the, right, playing the game according to yeah. the rules. Yeah. And it's just all about respect too. It's about having done your homework and understanding, you know, what it's all about. Mm. So what, what would be your tips as in, you know, A, building that rapport and also B, um, you know, creating that first uh, good impression in terms of different scenarios? Because what I'm looking at is that a lot of our clients are going to be, um, you know, watching this video or hearing it on the radio. Um, they're going to be in different elements of business and mm. typically small business owners. Um, and I think there seems to be 
you know, a lot of misunderstanding of what is appropriate in terms of you know, working as a small business owner. Now, some some feel that uniforms are the way to go. Some feel that you know casual dress is the way to go. You know, are there any sort of particular styles or things like that where, from your experience, you can say, look, for these particular types of industry categories, this may be better ways for you to dress to be respected mm -hmm. as your industry? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, which one would you like to start with? <laughs> Well, any. Uh, I mean. <laughs> so, uh, look, if you're looking at finance and banking, for example, that's very traditional dress, so suit and tie yeah. um, and very conservative colours. Then if you're going into accounting, similar thing. Legal profession, again, fairly formal um, dress and dark colours, which are very authoritative mm -hmm. and give over a very professional look. Um, then if you go into... Before you move on, just the tie. What about the tie? Because the there seems to be a, a casualisation of the yes. suit. Is a, a Look, business casual is, is um, you know, something that a lot of companies are starting to adopt. Yes. And it's by choice. And I, again, it depends on the nature of the clients that they're seeing on a daily mm -hmm. basis and what their business is all about. So if a gentleman opts to not wear a tie, mm -hmm. um, it do, but still wearing a suit as you are today, you're still looking very professional. The tie makes it even more professional. So taking the tie off brings it down mm -hmm. a level and the open shirt actually gives an invitation to people to get to know you because it's opening you up, okay. so to speak. Yep. Um, not to say that the tie closes, closes you down, sure. it doesn't, but it is a more relaxed style of dressing, which some people say leads to being able to build rapport and trust more quickly mm -hmm. than if they were actually wearing a tie. Okay. Hmm. So it's, it's up to the, the company. Sure. Um, if they're dealing with people who are very in very senior positions, then they probably would still continue to wear the tie. But look, a lot of people are going down more the business casual route now and mm -hmm. dressing down a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's just the way things, things sure. are. Mm. Yeah. Um, in terms of uniforms, how do you see those? Uniforms are, d are difficult. Um, a, because there's usually one manufacturer they usually choose one colour, and one colour doesn't suit everyone. Okay. Yep. Nor does one style suit everyone. Right. So for women in particular that have lots of curves and bumps, yes. <laughs> um, wearing certain styles can look fabulous on one lady, but not fabulous on another. Sure. And that can really affect their levels of confidence and self-esteem. If they feel that they don't look good mm -hmm. in their uniform when they're going to work, that can actually affect their performance levels as well. Yep, sure. So, so how might a business who's thinking of a uniform um, overcome that as a, uh, you know, to make the people feel comfortable? Yeah, I think it's important to, for a company that is looking at doing uniform to consider who are they dressing in their mm -hmm. organisation, men or women or both, and in working with someone who's going to produce that uniform, having different styles to be able to select from which still represent the corporate brand but are going to be adapted to the different type of person. So it might be that they can get jackets in different lengths or they can get different style trousers or um, a different style jacket. So you might have one with a lapel, one without a lapel. Mm -hmm. um, and the colours become important, choosing colours that are what we call universal colours that okay. everyone can yep. actually wear. And what sort of colours would they be? Um, generally navy blue is a good option. Yes. There's a range of them. Um, Periwinkle is another one. There are some pinks which are universal colours. So, yeah, again, it's just okay. knowing which ones to choose. I've seen some real estate agencies, for example, choose yellow. And yellow is a colour particularly that a lot of people just don't look good in. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, you just have to think really carefully. Okay. Um, in terms of, you know, a lot of people use uniforms or shirts and things like that as part of their advertising or promotional activity, mm -hmm. what does that say to people in terms of the potential customer? You know, does that, you know, there's, there's some, some would argue that that shows that they belong or that they stand out, you know, in terms of a shop where everybody's in casual clothes, for example. Um, others say that it sort of puts them aside, you know. How, what's your experience of how people feel when they're actually in uniform? People can feel amazing in a uniform. Um, because it might be the smartest thing that they've got in their wardrobe. 
okay. to wear. Yeah. So again, comes down to the fit, the colour, yes. um, and how they feel about working for that organisation if it is branded mm -hmm. or has a monogram on it. So if they're really happy to work for that organisation, yep. then they're going to feel fabulous about wearing something that actually has the corporate brand on it. Okay. So let's look at probably a couple of different scenarios, if I may, uh, Julie, is that you know, one is that if you're looking to present yourself and your business to a community, mm. what I'm hearing, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is that it's about understanding realistically who your customers are mm -hmm. and how you can best fit in with them at the appropriate level of where they are at. Um, so, for example, if I've got a lawn mowing uh business or something like that, wearing something with the, you know, the work shorts and all that sort of stuff with the company branding and everything else would probably seem quite reasonable to do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, are there sort of any specific areas where you've seen people make really big mistakes where you'd say, look, you know, in, my, in your experience, mm -hmm. then you know, this is probably a don't do in use of you know, corporate uniforms and those sort of things versus you know, ones that say is good? Um. Again, it's about recognising the people you're meeting for the day. So if we looked yep. at um, dress, if you're dressing for the day, three things I always say is yep. to be appropriate for yourself. So yes. wearing things that actually complement your particular body shape and style and yes. personal colours. So be appropriate for yourself, be appropriate for the situation. Mm -hmm. So thinking about where you're going and what that environment is going to be like, yep. and then being appropriate for the people you're meeting. So okay. definitely those three are the three key things to think about when you're getting dressed in the morning. Does it suit me? Does it, do I look great in it? Is it complimenting me? Where am I going? What sort of environment am I going into? And who are the people I'm going to be meeting? Yes. So if you can identify all of those three things very clearly, then getting dressed in the morning shouldn't be an issue. You should be able to put something on which is going to reflect all of that and so when people meet you, you're going to come across as likeable, attractive, confident, credible. Okay. Yeah, good. And I would imagine that would be the same for people who are looking to get work. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Um, I do work with recruitment companies as well, mm -hmm. helping candidates actually present for interviews. And it's very much about what is the company they're going into, what is the position they're actually applying for and what is going to be the appropriate dress for them to wear so that they are readily accepted and there's no, there's no mismatch or there's no question marks in people's minds as to whether this person is capable of actually doing the job. Interesting thought about that is that how, if I'm going to a company and I don't really know the culture, how can I actually get that information well, to do that appropriately? <laughs> Google's a wonderful thing. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. You can do a lot of due diligence and research yes. on um, the company that you're, yes. you're actually applying to. You can look at the senior executive. You can source them through LinkedIn mm -hmm. and get a little bit of background as to who might, if you can get the name of the person that's actually going to be interviewing you, see if you can locate those people on social media, find out a little bit about them, their background, pick up on something that will become a conversation point for you when you actually go into the interview. Yes. That also helps break the ice and get the conversation going. So, And it also tells them that you've done your homework and you're really interested in working for that organisation because you know a little bit about it. Okay. We're talking a lot about the image sort of stuff. Um, how, how, can, how do you help people um, with their sort of their self-worth and their value systems because you know obviously underneath the facade mm -hmm. as you said earlier is the uh, that internal feeling yeah you know, whether we feel good about ourselves and all that sort of stuff mm. are there things that you work with you know that you can maybe explain to the uh, the viewers and listeners that uh, you know these are things that you sh can be working on to actually help strengthen your own sort of sense of self-worth mm. Attitude is normally a big one. Yes. So we first look at, you know, do a little mini test on attitude mm -hmm. and where that's sitting. Um, then what motivates the person and looking closely at the values. I do have some sheets that I take people through. So understanding what's important to them as an individual and how that aligns with whatever position that they're actually applying for and the company values that they're, they're looking at going, seeking employment from. But when we work on image and I work on appearance, often there's a lot of thing, good things that come from that. Okay. So 
that can their whole mental attitude can shift when what they're seeing in the mirror is different and pleasing to the eye to mm -hmm. what they saw before. For a lot of people, the way they dress is very depressing for them mm -hmm. and it's very frustrating for them, particularly if they don't know how to go about dressing themselves properly. Yep. So once you take them through the process of dressing them properly, putting them in the right colours and the right styles and the right fit, and you put them in front of the mirror and you explain how this works and why it works, the transformation in people is sometimes quite wonderful. Oh, wow. um, yeah. They really do, their whole posture, their whole sense of being shifts. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. So sometimes just doing that process actually changes people immensely. Okay. Julie, one of the things that's going through my mind is that you know, thinking about the, the person who may not understand the image, may not know what to look for and all that sort of thing, is this sort of like a, a, a checklist of things that you know, if I get up in the morning mm -hmm. you know, that I can actually go through in my mind or you know, realistically even have it on the mirror or something like that, that can help me be appropriate to the circumstances of where I'm going and what um, I'm doing? Oh well, yeah, it gets back to what we were talking about before really, which is thinking about um, you know, what works for you. Yes. If you as an individual haven't really had your wardrobe assessed for a while, mm -hmm. then it might be a good opportunity for you to have a really good look at what's in your wardrobe. Is it current? Is it, um, does it suit you personally? Are the colours right? Is it in good repair? Does it need fixing up in yep. some way? Um, and then once you put that garment on, how is it sitting on you? Is it, is it looking right? For women, it's how do I complete this look? How do I accessorise it? Mm -hmm. um, what's appropriate in terms of length of hems, length of jackets? Um, are they wearing makeup? Are they, is their hair well groomed? These are all the little things that people do pick up on. So it's really going the extra distance if you're serious about projecting a great image is to look at everything, not just one element. Yeah, and for the guys? Thinking, yeah. For the guys, Things like, is the collar of your shirt, mm -hmm. is it not wearing? Because mm -hmm. um, sometimes it wears on the fold of, fried, of yes, the yeah. collar. Is the tie clean? Yeah. It hasn't got stains from yesterday's lunch on it. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I don't wear them. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, a, a lot of gentlemen don't take the trouble to actually make sure the sleeve length of their jackets is at the right length. Mm -hmm. So they'll often have it coming down you know, almost to their thumb, which mm. makes the jacket look too big for them. Okay. They might stuff things in their pockets, which means we don't get the nice silhouette mm -hmm. of the actual suit. It could be they need to look at their shoes to make sure their shoes are polished and shiny. And also for men too, wearing accessories, that they're not wearing anything that's distracting to another person. So yes, a watch is fine, a wedding ring or something like that is fine, but nothing that's going to be distracting okay. to other people. So no Mickey Mouse socks either. Oh, no. <laughs> Got to get rid of the Mickey Mouse socks. If you okay. really want to be professional, no. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that for the weekend. Yeah, you touched on some really good, interesting points there. And I guess one of the things out of that, of, of being aware of how you're dressing and, and how you think, is actually dramatically going to impact how you feel about yourself. Mm. Um, and then the better you feel about yourself, then the more likely you are to present yourself in a way that is confident um, and you're more likely to get the role if you're absolutely. going for a job or the, mm. the deal if you're going for a business deal or something like that. Absolutely and look there's even statistics that um, have proven that people who dress in a certain way or people who dress well I mm -hmm. should say are offered you know more um, or higher salaries more important roles and actually do succeed more than people who don't take the trouble to dress well. So I think that those sorts of statistics say something, sure. that it is really important and it's not enough to just say, oh, this will do, yeah. because it's very, very competitive out there. Yeah. And yes, 55% of a person's first impression and view is based on what they see. Yes. 38% is based on what they hear and only 7% is based on what you say. Yeah. So when you look at it in that sense, it really does come down to how people you know, what people's first impressions of you are when they walk, you know, when you meet them for the first time. And then of course, what follows through has to be consistent with that whole message. And if you can do that, sure. um, then, you know, you're on the, the road to success.
and it's not that it's not that difficult. Are there any sort of really big faux pas that people make in terms of dressing themselves? I mean, I can imagine that you know you, you touched on colour before. Mm. Colour is something that actually suits or doesn't suit people, and mm -hmm. some you can get away with. Mm -hmm. But there are some colours that are probably not the right colours to use for certain situations. Colours have psychological meanings attached to them, definitely. Probably the most people friendly of all colours to wear is navy blue. Mm -hmm. And it's a great medium contrast colour to put with a white shirt, for example. Right. Brown is a colour which um, is a little bit boring right. um, for people. Black's very authoritative very commanding and can actually put people off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Red's very energising and empowering, so if you're feeling a little bit down in, energ in energy on one day, putting something on that has red in it can actually lift your spirits. Mm -hmm. um, yellow's very fun and engaging, great for children. Green's very calming. So every colour has different meanings. Mm -hmm. Pink's very feminine, for example. Mm -hmm. um, white's very innocent. So for men, it's probably not as difficult for men because yes. you usually start with a suit and it's either a dark grey or a dark navy suit. Mm -hmm. For women, though, it becomes a lot more difficult in terms of, well, how do I put my personality into what I want to wear when I have to abide by a certain dress code? Mm -hmm. So that's where we look at pattern, for example. Gentlemen can do it in their ties with a pattern. Mm -hmm. Women do it with a scarf or a blouse or something like that, are able to okay. incorporate different colours into what they wear, which is doesn't become distracting, it becomes complementary yes. to their own personal colourings. Mm -hmm. hmm. what's, what's your view on bling? <laughs> oh, look, bling's great, not in a corporate environment, perhaps. Any excess, when we're talking about professional environments and accessorising, Accessorising should be kept to a minimum. Okay. So a watch, a wedding ring, maybe a bracelet, uh, maybe a necklace, but nothing, no overkill, and certainly nothing that clangs and rattles and you know bangs together that it yep. can become very distracting. Yep. That's great for social, but not for a business environment. Cool, cool. So Julie, in wrapping this up, um, where where can people a get in contact with you, but also you know where else might they be able to go to get help? You know, if they're not sure about how they can actually, um, I guess two things. One, how they currently are appearing in public, even mm. though they may not be aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, and secondly, how they can improve, you know, if that's what they feel that they need to do. Yeah. Look, um, I, I'm available. I, I do sessions with people often on Skype, which yes. makes it very affordable for them mm -hmm. and can put them through a style program, which allows them to identify what styles actually suit them, what they should be looking for and what they should avoid because yes. it's not complementary to them. Yes. Um, we can also do things like a, a full wardrobe audit where mm -hmm. we go in and actually remove the clothes which are not no longer serving you yes. or sabotaging your whole look. So yes. we remove those and then we're left with a, a gap as to, okay, what now do we need to put in there sure. to make it work for you? Um, looking at current magazines gives people an idea as to what's in fashion but of course that's where a lot of people come unstuck because what's in fashion doesn't necessarily suit them in yes. terms of their particulars so i work with people to help them incorporate fashion into their look in a way that actually suits them okay so it's like going to see an accountant or you know you go to an accountant because you want their expert advice yes and you rely on them to give you the truth it's no different to what I do. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, mm. website? Website is uh, www.juliehineimagestylist.com.au. Fabulous. Julie Hine, thank you for spending some You're time with us this morning. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah. It's been a pleasure.